why is hydrogen sulfide H2S a gas at room temperature, but H2O, which is a smaller molecule, is a liquid at room temperature? This all comes down to the boiling point, the temperature at which a molecule goes from liquid to a gas. H2S has a lower boiling point, and that's because of intermolecular forces. If you're asked for the why, I'll tell you right now. The most important intermolecular force to consider is called hydrogen bonding. It only exists in molecules where H is connected to either nitrogen or oxygen or fluorine. And some teachers will include, include chlorine in that list as well. In water, you have hydrogens directly bonded to oxygen. So water does have hydrogen bonding between the molecules. And by that, I mean one molecule of water and another molecule of water stick together more because of the intermolecular force called hydrogen bonding. But H2S does not have hydrogen directly connected to one of these electronegative atoms. And so it does not have hydrogen bonding. At that point in my world, the the science is already settled on which one's going to have the higher boiling point. Water, which has the stronger intermolecular forces, simply because it does have some hydrogen bonding, will boil at a higher temperature than H2S. Or put another way, this one's more likely to be liquid when this one is a gas. These molecules don't stick together very well. These ones do. And therefore, at room temperature, the water is able to condense into a liquid, and H2S, even though it's a heavier molecule, will be dispersed in gas form. Let's just talk about the other intermolecular forces while we're here. Dipole-dipole forces require the molecule to be polar. You're looking at polarity. Now, in order to do that, you should probably draw the Lewis structure. The Lewis structure for both of these molecules is basically the same, but with a different central atom. There we go. The shape of the molecule plus the electronegativity differences mean that they actually both are polar. Water is slightly more polar because of the larger electronegativity difference, um, but this one is polar as well. So there's not a whole lot of distinction between the relative polarity of these two, if you ask me. And then we go down to something called dispersion forces, which some teachers also call London forces. And that all molecules have these. And we generally say that the larger the molecule, the stronger those forces. So H2S will have relatively stronger London dispersion forces than water. But those basically don't even matter if the question is also, does one hydrogen bond and the other one doesn't? If that's the case, if it's yes hydrogen bonding versus no hydrogen bonding, the one that hydrogen bonds is going to win in terms of strength of intermolecular forces. So I've ranked my intermolecular forces from strongest to weakest. And the first time you find a difference, that's probably the difference maker in terms of state, melting point, boiling point, that kind of thing. Hey, thanks for being with me and best of luck.